Agrination. Yesterday, we showed you the chaff cutter, the technology that was what we were all about. And today, we head all the way to Meru County, where we speak to a farmer who was once a full-time accountant, but now he is a large-scale farmer. And if there's one thing he is not playing about is the uptake of technology. Off we go to Meru County. <music> We're now in the farm where everything happens practically with Mr. John. Thank you so much for being with us here again. And what we were doing is the chisel plow. Please yes. help us understand what it does. We were demonstrating to them how, how a chisel plow works. And basically a chisel plow is just an implement that is mounted at the back of the tractor that helps to break the pan of a field that uh, we are planning to plant any crop. The, the advantage of a, of a chisel plow is that, uh, unlike a disc plow, is that it opens up or digs up ch t t trenches on the ground. So any time when you get some rains, the rain is able to soak onto those lines that the chisel plow has been able to open up. And, uh, as you can see, it, that chisel plow has a crumble roller at the back. The crumble roller helps to break up the, these big crowns that you are seeing. And using this machine, how long will it take you to make sure that the entire space is evenly ploughed? It, dep it depends. If, if the, the, uh, just the way the ground is, it's, we really had a hard pan over here. It's taken me about uh, two days to do it. But with a, soft, with a soft pan, it will take probably just one day. After the land is evenly ploughed using this technology, chisel plough, please take us through the next step until we're ready for planting. So what happens over here, we'll, we'll wait for the rains to come uh, to soften up these crowns. After that, we'll put a disc harrow and probably because of the rains that we'll have probably have received, we'll probably get a germination. Then you'll we'll come in with a sprayer that you've just seen at home just to kill any weeds that will have come up. Then we we'll come in with a planter. What inspired you to invest in the first machinery you got? I began doing five acres, uh, progressively up to 300 acres at the moment. Mm -hmm. So the, mo the motivation of getting some good king income is what has made me get more shambas. The government right now is very keen on the agricultural sector. If anything, one of the things that they're hoping is going to be a top of their legacy is fixing the agriculture in our country as a farmer. Are you feeling the effect? If yes, how? If no, what would you love to see happen? We are already feeling the changes, but the biggest problem that we're having in Meru is that uh, I personally registered as a, as a, as a rad scale farmer doing about 300 acres. That is what I registered, but unfortunately the vouchers that I'm receiving on my phones uh, can only qualify me for four bags. So yesterday I had to send, I had to talk to a friend of mine in Eldoret as we, as, as we speak, um, my fertilizer is being loaded there because their fertilizer is available. And like here in Meru, I think the country has not focused so much on farming in Meru because the amount of fertilizer that, that we are getting at the moment is not anything that we can talk about. Talking to other small scale farmers who are also trying their best and they are hoping they'll reach this level when they can have this kind of machinery, technology, land. What advice would you give them? My concept of farming has been uh, do, do a small acreage and maximize your yields. And when I started, when I, was, when I started farming by maybe five acres, I ensured that I really maximized my yields on those, those five acres. My concept has always been do five acres and harvest a hundred bags. Instead of doing 10 acres to, to harvest a hundred bags. So before I think of increasing my acreage, the concept is am I making use of the land that I have at the moment, maximizing my yields per hectare. In terms of training, there's a lot of machinery happening here. There's a lot of science, there's a lot of work. You just don't wake up and you have all this knowledge at your fingertips. How did you get access to this kind of information? These days, information is already available in the internet. And, uh, and then there's also we, are also, we also have an organization that is called Serial Growers Association, where I'm the chairman of Meru County. We are sharing a lot of information with different counties. Adventure team that is uh, that has contracted us to do to do canora for them. 
are really doing a serious research on different varieties of crops. And they are setting up different trial fields where they share information with the farmers. So every time, every, every year, we are moving out of our county, every season, to be precise, we are sharing info, visiting trial fields. You know, farmers really want to see things being done practically. Not, not, not things that we read in the books. We want to see things on practical grounds. Now, as we wind up, we can finish up with a message of hope. Two people I would love for you to address. The youth, enticing them into looking at agriculture in a different light. And of course, the government being a farmer. What would you like to tell them? What I would like to say, first, I would really th like to thank our president, William Samoy Ruto, for, for his initiative that he has taken, especially on agriculture. Initially, fertilizer has been uh, a stumbling block to all farmers. The cost of fertilizer had really skyrocketed. Very few farmers were able to buy fertilizer at the prices that these fellows were selling at. That's, that's a good indicator. The other thing that I would, I would uh, encourage our government to do or to work on is discourage uh, subdivision of land. Land has become a big, a very thorny issue, especially when, when the old men pass away. The land that is left behind, everybody wants that piece of land subdivided. I don't know what the government can do to ensure that the agricultural land is not subdivided. I think the other thing is that uh, kids in school should also, we should also have different courses to encourage kids from, from the young age to encourage them to do agriculture. Thank you so much, Mr. John, for your time. We have learned so much when it comes to modern day technology in the farm, and I'm very sure our viewers back at home feel the same way and keep up the good work that you're doing in feeding the nation, yeah? There you've had it. There is absolutely no place under the sun right here in Kenya and beyond that we will not go to make sure that we show you farmers who are using modern day technology in the agricultural process practices and the breaks today halted in Meru County and boy oh boy wasn't it worth it we've learned so much and that is all we had for you when it comes to Farm Connect we will be back with absolutely so much more keep watching Kenya's Gold Nipo Gadiga County Yakericho wanasema the green environment hapa bana acha ni kuambia kitu kimoja Tumefuatilia kipindi na tumefurahia kweli kweli. Asante sana kwa kukubali kujiunge nasi. Majalio ya Mwenyezi Mungu kesho basi tunayo mengi usitake kwenda popote maana hapa kuna majibu ya maswali yako hasa kuhusiana na swala la ukulima utapataje hela zako. Jina langu ni Emmanuel Terer kutoka hapa eneo la Kericho. All right, now we have come to the end of the show. I want to thank you. Our guest, you were so thank good. You very we much. will definitely have you back. We also want to thank Terrell back there in Kericho and also our production team that works so much behind the scenes. Thank you so very much. And finally, the VIP, our audience, for choosing to stick with us every single day. Thank you so very much. We meet again tomorrow, Friday. It's all about climate, smart agriculture. And my parting shot today is the there is nothing as good, as tasty, as rich as Kenya's tea. My name is Violetta Angina. See you tomorrow.